This conference will now be recorded. So let's go ahead with source tree for Windows installation, which is um, this is like continuation of the list of software to install that we started from. Come to Google, can do source tree download. This first link can be used to do the job. Click on the first link. And then um, it is discovered automatically. Click on download for Windows. Agree on this one. Click on download. And click on run. Yeah, let's allow it some time. Source three windows has opened. Okay. Then the next thing is to do select. Um, this one says Source three is a free product that requires the one time registration using your application with Pokemon. Though what we are planning to use it for is Visual Studio Team Services. So for now, let's use select bit bucket. This one we expect us to log in to bit bucket account. And if you look at this one now, it's on registration page loading. Okay, so if you come back here, all you have to do is to have a Gmail account. And then when you have a Gmail account, if you don't have one, you can create it. Okay, so click on login with Gmail. Then I will log in with my Gmail. IT of scaling. Click on sign in. I will expect you to use your password as well while logging in. Now so logged in. So after that, okay, if you come back to this page, then see it says we've logged in as itlskilling at gmail.com. That's what you have to do. Then click on next. Let's see what we have here. Okay, leave it as it is, click on next. Remember the usefulness of source tree is like um, user interface for Git. And already we've installed Git for Windows. This one says tool installation completed, click, click on next. And this is like, um, before we finish, take a moment to configure these settings. This is discovered automatically. Source tree will discover what you use, you know, what you registered your Git for Windows with. When I downloaded Git for Windows, I registered that Git with Christopher and email address as Christopher at gmail.com. Um, I can uncheck this one. Click on next. This one says, do you have an SSH key that you like to load now? If if not, you can click no and create one later. So we don't have, just click no. So that is it. We have this source tree installed now, as you can see, okay? And obviously this is the login detail we use when we registered. So I'm going to stop this one now. And that is for source tree installation. So the next one is, okay, before I stop it, I can actually put it on this task bar. Source tree is here. For future use, I'll just say right click and put it on task bar. It's here now. So the next 
software to do is postman come here and do postman download click on the second one get postman environment okay then let's see it's a free free software okay it's an open source software oh uh, i'm not sure wait i will come back here and do let's go for the first one yeah this first one has what we need then this one says are you downloading for 32 bit or 64 bit so if you are not sure what system type yours is okay you can always come back here come to type here to search and type this this right click click on properties this tells us the system type this system type is 64 bit and for some of us that doesn't know how to use or how to find what your computer specification is this is how to find it here we have our processor as in the processor size and the processor speed we have installed memory of 8 gigabytes system type is 64 and all that so that means while downloading or while installing Postman, we need to select the second one. Okay, I've selected it. Click on Run. So we need to allow it some time. It's doing it. Okay. Let's allow it more time. Okay, so now this one says, uh, sign in with your Gmail. I have an option here, which I'm going to make use of. I'll skip it, close it. So that is Postman that I've downloaded, okay? So if I want to pin it to taskbar, I will just call it and say postman. Right click and pin to taskbar. So I have it here as well. So the last one is Chrome Remote Desktop. So we just say Chrome Remote Desktop Download. I'll go for the second option, Chrome Remote Desktop, Chrome Web Store. Click on that. And then this is the app you need, Chrome Remote Desktop, okay? Then click on Available on Chrome. Uh, no, this is not what we need, okay? Let's come back, okay? Let's click on Extension. No, this is this is not the right one I'm looking for. Click on extension here that is from here. Or let's go for the first one, the first option. Yeah, the same page. The app you need looks like this, okay? 
So let's click on extension. Extension. I know exactly what I'm looking for, so this is not the one. One sec. This conference will now be recorded. So what happened is um, this laptop at the moment does not have Chrome browser installed. And Chrome Remote Desktop is an add-on on top of Chrome browser. That means you cannot get it installed without you having Chrome browser <clears throat> installed. If you already have Chrome browser installed, just ignore this step. But if you haven't, you need to install Chrome browser first. So what I would do is I'll just say download Chrome. Then I'll choose the first option here and click on download Chrome. I can uncheck this one and click on accept and install, then run. Okay, then I'll click on yes. So let's allow it more time to complete. Okay. This conference will now be recorded. So now I have Chrome installed, and even you can search for it here. Before, if you do the same search, you are not going to have it. So I'm going to pin this Chrome browser to the taskbar. So I have it now. If I minimize this browser, I can actually launch Chrome. On top of this one now, we can then do Chrome remote desktop download then if we choose the first option here okay we can then do this is the app like i said that we need you can see this app i will be using it to gain remote access to your pc anytime i need to connect to your pc remotely so if i scroll up now I will then do add to Chrome, then hard app. Okay, so hard app, let's wait for it. So this is the app we are looking for, Chrome Remote Desktop. Click on this. When you click on it, it will ask you to log in. I will just let me log in with my Gmail. Okay, let's wait for it. So now that I've logged in, okay, I can now make use of this Chrome remote desktop. The app is here now. This is it. And when you click on continue, it asks us to log in again. Okay. I think I have to click on turn on so before it can allow us. Anyway, now that we have this one, anytime I ask you to try to connect, you know, with me remotely, all you have to do is load your chrome remote desktop and click on get started this is for the first time from your side i'm the one that want to access your laptop the option you have to click is share you click on share when you click on share for the first time this is for the first time okay you click on accept and install you can select Chrome. How do you want to open this? Click OK. Yeah, it has downloaded additional software. Well, I believe this is one of 
this is not how it will be all the time. Then double click on this one to execute it, okay? Then click on yes. This is like additional software on top of Chrome Remote Desktop, which we allow you to generate an access code to give to the other person. See, this is the access code that you will give me anytime. Obviously, this is not this is not permanent. Each time you want to load Chrome Remote Desktop, you need to generate an ID like this or this access code to share with me. Okay, so it's pretty much straightforward. That is it. Yeah. So yeah, that is how to do it.